Hey y'all. Last night I had a video shared with me by a person I respect. And um, it's on a subject that's that's pretty tough. And <clears throat> it is it is time that we take that we begin to take some some theoretical and um, historical looks at uh, at the lessons that were learned in times such as uh, the American Revolution and the American Civil War and, and what sort of things were accomplished, what were the original goals, and what were the consequences of those actions. It's, it's very important to do so. Otherwise, we neglect the sacrifices that were made in those times. Starting, starting with the first one, um, the American Revolution, where where America declared its independence from Britain as a colony, in a in a very long and, and bloody war against the greatest military force on earth at that time, we we achieved sovereign independence as a nation, the United States. To what end, though? Um, immediately, immediately following the revolution, we had a war debt to pay to France for, for ships, personnel, loans. We had bonds to pay to, to service personnel for promises rendered. And we did not have the ability to pay those. Uh, when, when Congress, through the Articles of the Confederacy, attempted to go to the states, to get those monies, uh, they got laughed in their faces. Leading up to an event referred to as the Shays Rebellion, which was a rebellion that people took over the economic state in, in Massachusetts, where, where people died. It was, a very, it was a very serious event. The thing that I take away from all that is revolution and things like that are well and good but it's a it's a great bit like whenever whenever you're starting a new business and everybody's with you in the planning stage and it's all exciting and and all the possibilities are open but then when the real work starts of starting that business participation begins to dwindle off when when it really becomes real and it really becomes work and you really understand the cost of freedom participation becomes to dwindle on off. So it is with any revolution. Um, there's a reason why revolutionaries do not make good politicians or leaders. They're, they're good at what they do, and that's that. I think what the Founding Fathers discovered after the successful American Revolution was they ended up handing the keys over to, to a system that at that time could not compete globally or potentially could not compete globally. If you take the, uh, the approach of the traditional approach of um, special operations where the enemy of my enemy is my friend I've come to believe that that only goes so far. If we, we allied ourselves with France at that time because they were enemies with England. However, French soon, France soon saw um, Napoleon Bonaparte. So let me get this straight. During the War of 1812, we were cool with Napoleon <laughs> because they were enemies with England. What strange, strange bedfellows that takes the enemy of my enemy is my friend I think if you're going to subscribe yourself to that then it needs to carry true through both through both aspects not just <clears throat> my enemy of my enemy is my friend well, okay, but 
like why which person is your worst enemy um, take for example that time let's say you have England and then and then France there are plenty of Americans who at that time would have plenty of reason to continue to see France as an enemy uh, people people in the northern states veterans of the French and Indian War they would have plenty of reasons <sighs> I bring this up for a very, very important reason. Uh, senseless revolution and misguided secession leads to ruin. From from a historical standpoint, you gotta you gotta study these things, and you have to. You have to place your time in historical context. Um, I would think that that there are some who who believe that the the democratic process in America has been thwarted. I disagree. Um, in the in the categories of of how to conduct yourself in the realm of ideas. you need to really look at is every every political and um, ambassadorial task been exhausted and if you think it has go back through it again and it's important because what you be left with after after such campaigns is is as important as anything else uh, public sentiment community involvement if people don't share your vision for for what a nation should be then you're merely an aberrant criminal and you'll be sold out as such in the case of uh, in the case of the Civil War, um, the the states that seceded, <laughs> historically looking at it, it's such a mess. It it reminds me of a bunch of idiots just just picking a fight because they want to fight at some point, you know. Um, and I think of back. 10 years, 15 years before the Civil War, when at a banquet, uh, General Jackson, General Andrew Jackson was there. And, and the idea of secession was becoming very, very popular. And all these southern states were going for it because they felt, they felt disjointed and, and far away from, from the centralized government. And everybody wants their shot to be on top, you know? And a lot of people think, oh, well, this, this person that's against what's going on, they, they must be my friend. Well, no, they just want their shot at being on top. So um, all these people at, at this banquet that Jackson's at, they're like, oh, secede from the Union, oh, free, blah, 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 right? And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, this Western frontier man, this Southern general, hero, hero of the War of 1812, and um, veteran of the American Revolution, lifts his glass and says, preserve the Union, while looking, while looking these men dead in the eye. What could be so damn important about preserving the Union? Do you trust, do you trust the judgment of a man like uh, Andrew Jackson? Or do you only trust the judgment of a man like Andrew Jackson when he's when he's talking about the stuff that you agree with when when he took down a, a centralized banking system? Is that the only part of him that's good? Or do you trust the same judgment that that sees a centralized banking system as being a long term problem? Do you trust the judgment of that man in other aspects? <clears throat> A historian 
doesn't have the luxury of cherry picking ideas to present a case. That's something that a pulp author gets to have the luxury of doing. The reason why a historian doesn't get to cherry pick ideas is because he has to present his ideas against other historians who can assemble facts, possibly even better than he can. And they can offer their perspectives on, um, on factual situations. <clears throat> I've been thinking about it a lot. Because I, I think about where my nation's going and, and the sacrifices that these men have taken. What was the measure of the man in the, in the American infantry back when we, we conducted warfare in a, in a rank and file system? The first guy in line, pulling back that lock in the face of a, the muzzles of all those brown besses, knowing that he was going to take that first bullet. He pulled back the lock and he stood his ground taking the bullet for the man behind him, who he had faith would, would come forth. But what was the measure of his resolve? What would you do with the inheritance that man provided you? The thing about inheritance, do you know how to preserve inheritance? Do you know how to judge whether or not if you're given a great inheritance, whether or not it's going to last if you don't need it? If a wealthy man passes away and leaves his children who who don't have jobs who just sort of who just sort of drift through life like a tumbleweed if he leaves his fortune to those to those persons it'll be squandered if the same man leaves his fortune to a successful person who has their own way who has their own means that fortune gets to be added to this theoretical inheritance that I'm talking about isn't just about money. Take a look around. See what see what the American people are really made of. Don't don't judge them and just write them off as sheep. I want you guys to take a look around and, and really see what these people are made of. See how they handle adversity. See what they continue to uh, determine as adversity. What I mean by that is, is what do they see as a, as a big deal or as trouble? You know, what do they see as a, as a, as a terrible obstacle? And then watch how they handle it. <clears throat> Colonel Grossman in his um, in his book on wolves, sheep, and sheepdogs talks about society as being an egg where a hard shell contains this liquid mass that may one day form into something great. And these people, certain people are born that that comprise that that shell. History is full of these eggs smashing against each other. One shell hitting another shell. The shell shatters. It's just a shell designed to, uh, designed to protect the insides of the egg. But we smash together all the time. <laughs> and we just shatter, and, it, and it's nothing. And then there's nothing inside of it. And it's not, for some bizarre reason, it's not ready yet.
Just take a look around. Take an honest look around. And take a look around with... I don't want to use the term love, but some of you will understand this. And, um, and be honest with yourself. Thank you for your time on this.